This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and in this first video we need to do a little bit of setup for our project. So in order for Unity to communicate with a MySQL database, we need that database to exist somewhere. If you have web hosting of any kind, chances are they have support for MySQL databases. However, it can be good when you're first starting out with a project to be able to kind of keep it a little bit more private, as well if you don't have web hosting, it'd be nice to have a kind of free solution. And so for this, what we're going to do is we're going to emulate a server on our local system, in this case using a program called MAMP. MAMP is actually going to solve two problems for us. It is going to allow us to both store a MySQL database. It's also going to allow us to access a quote unquote website with some PHP files that we can use to communicate between Unity and the database. So in order to get this, you can log on to mamp.info. The free version has all of the features we're going to need for this project. So you can just hit download and download either for Windows or for Mac, both are available. Once it's downloaded and you start up MAMP, you're going to see a screen like this. One thing you'll want to do is double check in preferences and go over to the web server tab. You're going to see a document root and then a file directory there. That is where you're going to want to put your files for this project, any PHP files that you have. So take, make a note of where that is. And we're going to be working with that in future videos. Likewise, we need to set up our database. We can do this by double clicking on the open start page icon. This is going to bring us to a uh, URL called localhost slash MAMP. Now localhost itself is actually where that document root, it looks at those files there. And the slash MAMP just brings us to this sort of a um, splash page that MAMP provides. We want this splash page right now because we want to do the MySQL administration. You can access this by clicking on the link here that says PHP MyAdmin. This opens up another sort of utility called PHP MyAdmin that allows us to kind of manually control our databases. We're eventually going to be controlling these through code in our PHP files, but for right now, we're going to want to set, do some initial setup manually. One thing you're going to take note of are user accounts. If we click here, you'll see that their um, MAMP comes with a couple of kind of default user accounts. These are um, this root all named root, and they all have a password of root. And so this is just sort of a kind of um, way to easily access things. When you do go to moving this to an actual public database, you are going to want to establish your own usernames with passwords so that it's not easily accessible to others. Those will always be private. We'll discuss how we keep those private inside of our PHP files, but you will want to have your own custom access uh, credentials. The other thing we need to do is actually create a database. So we're going to go over to the databases tab and you'll see I have a few in here just from some projects that I had worked on previously. And I'm going to create a new database by going into this create database uh, form. And I'm going to name this, uh, we'll call this SQL, or we'll call this Unity Access because we're accessing this from Unity. Um, collation is fine here. You'll see a number of um, options, but we can just let it choose for us automatically. And we'll say create. Now, a database itself doesn't actually store the information. It stores a number of tables which store information. And you can get into a lot of kind of in-depth control by having multiple databases with relations to one another. But for now, we're just going to use one. And we're going to call this players. And in here, we're going to have five total columns. You can choose as many as you'd like for as much information as you need. For this particular example, we're just going to have five different kind of discrete pieces of information per player that registers. So we'll hit go. This brings us to a new form where we can actually populate each of our columns and what sort of information we want them to hold. The first one we're going to use is a unique identifier. So we're going to call this ID, and this is going to be an integer that is unique to every player that, log, that um, signs up. They may have other pieces of information that are the same. For example, two players might have the same score or might be using the same password even, but we don't want, uh, we always want the IDs to be unique. Next we have, an integer value here, and that is what we want for the ID, and we're going to give it a length of 10. So this gives us a potential of approximately 10 billion unique IDs that could be in here, which seems like plenty. Um, default, collation, and attributes we don't need to worry about in this particular case. And then we're going to scroll over to the right. Uh, we're not going to worry about null, however, index is important here. Like I said, we want each of these um, IDs to be unique, so we can go into index and say primary. This means that this is how this table will be searched, is primarily through this ID and it guarantees that each ID is unique. 
So we'll say, um, we can just leave these as is and say go. And that just establishes that that is sort of the primary identifier for this table. We also want to check off this AI, which means auto increment. And auto incrementing means that every time we add something to this table, we don't need to actually populate an ID. The database will simply look at it and say, okay, um, this is the lowest available number. I will give that to this particular row of the table. So we'll check that off there. Now we can scroll back. The next one we want is a username. So I'm going to say username here. And this one, we don't want an integer. We're going to use a var char, which basically means like a string. It's, it can be a you know, variety of um, letters, numbers, potentially uh, punctuation as well. Um, and so we'll put that there as var char. And we want our maximum here for the length. We might say something, and you can choose whatever number you want. Um, I might say something like 16 characters is the longest I want someone's name to be. Um, in our game, but that's a fairly arbitrary um, value. You can choose it to be whatever you want. Um, default here, we are not going to worry about again because we need to. We work, we're going to make sure that someone is populating this every time. Collation will be automatically populated in this case. This is just kind of saying like how um, the characters are handled. Um, attributes again, we don't need to worry about. We do want to make sure that every row is unique as well because we don't want two players with the same username in this particular case. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say index and say unique. It's not the primary way we're searching, but it is a, uh, we do want to make sure that each username is different. So we'll say unique there and just hit go. And that is fine there. We don't need to auto increment. The next two are going to be uh, for our password. And we're not actually going to store the password as plain text for security reasons. However, we are going to store two things called a salt and a hash, which combined together can confirm whether a password is correct or not. So I'm going to call this first one hash and this next one salt. And these two to kind of tie together. We want both of these to be var char as well because our, a good password typically has um, different types of characters in it. And we're going to give these, um, the hash is going to have a length of 100, and the salt is going to have a length of 50. And we'll see how those work um, in a future video. Again, not worrying about the default collation, any of that. And we actually don't have to worry about the indices for these either, because we can actually have multiple people using potentially the same um, password. Although chances are these are going to kind of become unique in the encryption process anyway. Lastly, we're going to have another integer value, and this one's going to be the score. So this is going to be what score you've gotten in the game. You could use this to store. This is where we start starting to score the actual, um, starting to store the actual game data of our game. This could be, you know, how many coins you have, how many resources you have, what level you've reached. Any of that sort of information is going to go in here. In this case, I'm going to give this again a max of say 10. So someone could reach a maximum of about 10 billion um, points. And the rest of this, again, we're not, um, actually this one we will set a default for. We will say as defined and we will say zero so that when someone first creates, a, first creates an account in our game, they have zero points and they can go up from there. Uh, again, not worrying about the indexes or auto incrementing on this one. So with all that, we can hit save and this will create this table in our database that we can now access um, through our code. We're not going to do anything else with this now. We don't need to add any um, users or anything to it right now, but we will start doing that through our PHP and our Unity efforts. So that covers, um, like I say, the two main things, the storing of our PHP files and the database that MAMP does for us. The next thing you need is a way to code in PHP. You can actually use Visual Studio if you would like for this. Um, however, you would need to probably install some sort of PHP IntelliSense. Um, so they have some modules on their asset store that you can use for that. Um, however, I actually prefer to use another program called Sublime Text that I use for most of my web, web development uh, coding. And so you can go to sublimetext.com and get their uh, free kind of um, evaluation version there if you'd like to use that. Otherwise, you can really use any text editor you'd like. You could even just use a straight up plain text editor if you want. However, obviously using more involved IDEs will give you better functionality and more features. Lastly, we need to set up our project itself. In here, uh, in Unity, um, I've just created the simple project called SQL Connect or SQL Connect. You haven't, I haven't put any uh, files into it yet and I haven't set up any scenes. We're actually gonna be setting up a total of four scenes in here, and we're gonna do that now just so that it saves us some time um, as we're going through the rest of these videos. So first one I'm gonna do, I'm gonna quickly save this. I'm gonna save this as main menu. 
And I'm going to right click and create a button. And that automatically creates a canvas for me as well. I'm going to switch to 2D view and I'm actually going to focus on my canvas here so that I can see what I'm working with. The button I want here, I'm going to have actually three buttons in this scene. I'm going to center this one quickly uh, by going to the anchor presets and doing Alt Shift and uh, re. Uh, why isn't that? Oh, Alt Shift, there we go. To recenter it. And then I'm going to actually duplicate this button a couple of times. One, two, excellent. I'll move the first one down to about there, and the second one down to about there is good. The first button is going to be a register button, and I'm going to change the text on the button itself to register as well. Second one is going to be for logging into our game. And again, I'll update the text. And the third one, we are going to name play game and relabel the button as well. In addition, I'm going to add a text object to this, and I will move it up actually in the space a bit. And here I'm going to say right now, I'm going to say no user logged in. But this is actually going to show us whenever we're on the main menu, if someone is logged in, who it is. We'll save that. And now I'm actually going to um, resave this scene as our second scene, which is going to be register menu. And we're going to use some of this, some of the same stuff here. I'm going to actually rename the text in this case to prompt. And we're going to redo the text to um, register an account. We only need uh, one of these buttons. I'm going to delete the login and the play buttons altogether, and I'm going to move the register button itself down. We're going to keep the register label because that is what will ultimately be the action of this menu. However, we also need to add a couple of um, a couple of input fields that we can put in our username and our password. So we're going to go up to Canvas. I'm going to create an empty object, and I'm going to resize this back to zero zero. And this is just going to be sort of a container. And so here I'm going to say name um, name input, we'll say. And then in here, I'm going to add a couple of new UI elements. I'm going to add a text element, and I'm going to add an input field. Text element, I'm actually going to move to the side a bit, because right now it's laying underneath the input field. So we'll move it this way here. And I will put in name. And I'm going to just align it middle here so that it's lined up more with the um, input field. The input field itself, I'm actually going to just give it a quick rename to name input field for um, identification purposes later. And that's good there. Then I'm going to duplicate this name input. I'm going to grab the second one here. I'm actually going to use the position Y here. It's be a little bit easier to grab since it doesn't have a width or height. And I'm going to bring it down to about there. And this one is going to be our password input. And I'm going to change that um, the name of the input field here to PW input field. And I'm going to change the label to password. So this creates a very simple registration account. We would, chances are, um, if we were developing this even further, want to have things to confirm the password. Um, possibly some other information we're getting from our players. But for right now, this will do the job of kind of showing how the system works. I'm going to save that register menu. And then I'm actually going to resave this once more. And this time I'm going to call this log in menu. And so in this case, we are going to keep our um, register button. However, we're going to rename it to log in. And we're going to rename uh, the label here as well to log in. Um, we're going to keep our name and um, password inputs because we're going to need both of those again to um, log in the player. However, our prompt can change from register an account to log into your account. And we'll save that. Lastly, we're going to need the actual kind of scene where we quote unquote, play our game. It's going to be a very simple game. All, all you're going to do is click a button to add points to your score. 
um, but it will kind of show how this whole system works. So I'm going to once again save this scene. I'm going to save this now as game. Um, I'm going to delete both of the input fields. We don't need those. And I'm going to duplicate actually both of our buttons. I'm going to duplicate this button and I'm going to duplicate um, the prompt as well. So the button, I'm going to rename. The first one I'm going to um, say earn points. And we're going to relabel it here as earn points. We don't see it changing because it's kind of hiding behind this button. So we'll actually move that as well right now. I'm going to uh, click this here and I'm going to drag it up. Uh, there we go. I'll kind of keep some separation between these because the second button is going to be to exit the game. And so we're going to rename this to exit and likewise change the label to exit. Uh, now our prompts here, again, we have two um, text fields now. The first one I'm going to drag up a bit in our view here. There we go. And this one I'm going to say uh, username and not populate it right now because we don't know who which user is in our game. And then the second, and I'm going to actually name these two. I'm going to call this name display. And then the second one here is going to be our score display. And we're going to relabel it to score. And we'll obviously populate that once we have a score to populate. So with all that, we've now got our database set up. We've got our programs to um, do our coding. And we've got our scenes set up so that we are ready to go and start actually making Unity communicate with our database and communicate online so that it can get all this information. So we're going to dive into that in our next video, talking about how that communication works. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.